Hello and welcome to today's video. In today's video, I'm going to use this mannequin head and make a creepy cosplay mask out of Warbla. Now to do this mask, I'm going to need some foil, some duct tape, some gesso, some black acrylic paint, some white acrylic paint, some craft foam, and some elastic cord. All right. Let's get this stuff over to my art table and get started. To start things off, I'm going to add some foil to my mannequin head. I want this mask to be a little more simple. I don't want it to have like a lot of facial features. So I decided to build it up with some foil and basically I just want to make sure that it has a little bit of a human shape with like the nose and getting the placement of where the eyes would be. So once I have all my foil on there, I can go ahead and start heating up and adding some warbla. So I have my sheet of warbla here. I'm using my heat gun and then I'm just going to cut out some sections of it, kind of round it a little bit so it matches the side there. And I'm going to cover up most of my foil. I do want to have a couple areas open. Obviously I want to have one area open for my left eye and then I want a section open to show like my jaw area. And basically what I, my thought process is, is this is a mask that got shattered and one of the eyes is open and the side, the left side of my jaw is open. So I'm starting with one layer of Warbla and getting my basic shape of my mask. And I'm just heating up small sections, blending them in or smoothing them in with a ball tool until I have my base completely done and pretty much how I want it to be. So once that is done, I'm gonna start adding the top layer. Now for the top layer, I want to add lots of pieces of Warbler that have like sharp edges, like these triangular shapes. And so it looks like almost like broken glass. Now I don't want the mask to look like it was made out of glass, but I like that shattered glass look. So I want this to have a very shattered look to it. So I'm making these all different sizes. So I've got some medium sized triangles here that I'm heating up and applying over the bridge of the nose, trimming it down so I don't black, block that eye socket. And then I'm just taking small strips of Warbla to fill in some of the larger gaps. The other gaps in between I'm not worried about. I want to have that separation in the pieces. So I'm going to go ahead and finish covering this. I want to build up around the mask's right eye and around the rest of the face. Now I am using a hard plastic mannequin head for this. If you're going to work with Warbla, I would recommend using something similar to this. I know you can get those styrofoam mannequin heads pretty cheap, but I'm, I know they would melt with the heat gun and you definitely don't want that. So if you want to do it out of Warbla, I would use the hard plastic ones. Now, if you wanted to make your mask out of something else, like a paper mache mask, or even some kind of cloth mask that you needed, you know, something to start with, one of the styrofoam heads would probably work fine for that. So I haven't done much with paper mache in a long time, so it would be fun to try to recreate some of these in that form too. So if you guys would like to see masks out of other materials, please leave it in the comments down below, and I would definitely do that if there's interest. So I'm going to go ahead and continue covering this with all kinds of little strips or shards of Warbla. Just heat them up press them in so they bond to the base layer of Warbla. And you'll notice here I'm not using my ball tool to smooth them in because I want to have those nice defined edges. So when I paint it, it'll give me that shattered look. At least that's what I'm hoping for. So I'm just filling in a few gaps. Wanted to kind of round the eye out a little bit. I'll just keep working on these small little pieces, heat them up, get them in place until I am happy with the look. So doing these little details, I think, is what really completes a piece. And it also seems to be some of the most time-consuming things. It's like adding scales to a dragon 
or spots to a you know certain sculpture it just you know it, it adds that finishing detail to it so now that I'm done sculpting it I'm gonna take it off of my mannequin head and I'm gonna clean out all the foil which actually came out all in one piece so it was pretty easy to pull that out now I'm just gonna heat up the warbler around the edges and smooth those out and if you see it keeps going off camera because I'm taking it up to my face to make sure it fits okay and there's no rough edges that are gonna scratch you want it to be as comfortable as you can plus you don't want to hurt yourself with it that's why I made sure like that eye socket area there making sure none of those pieces were poking in now I'm adding some craft foam and the craft foam I have has an adhesive bag you just peel off the paper and attach it but before I do any more of that I want to make a couple loops so I can run my elastic cord through. So I'm just heating up some scraps of warbler. I use a paintbrush to give myself a little bit of space between it and the mask. And so I can kind of loop it around. Now I'm just cutting off some more of my craft foam and building it up. So I did about four layers thick on that forehead and the cheek. And that way it would just kind of push it away from my face a little bit. And it wasn't too snug and too uncomfortable. So now that I'm happy with this, I'm going to go ahead and add a coat of gesso. Now gesso is just a surface prep. I use it for all my Warbler projects, so my acrylic paint will adhere to it a little bit better. So I'm just doing one coat. I've never had an issue doing needing to do more, and I will let that dry overnight. Now with the gesso dry, I'm going to go ahead and start adding my paint. So I'm starting with a base coat of black, so I'm just using this black acrylic paint this uh it's patio paint and this is wrought iron black so patio paint has a built-in sealant in it so i feel like it works really well for these warbler projects especially ones that are going to get a little more use like something for a cosplay so you know like a mask or if you're going to use like a bracer or some kind of shield or weapons i think this stuff works pretty well for that i haven't had any chipping issues so far with any of the pieces i've done so I'm just getting this completely covered with the black. I want to make sure all those crevices are filled in and then I will do some dry brushing over it. So once I'm happy with how this looks, I'm going to go ahead and let this dry overnight. And now that it's completely dry, I'm going to add some cloud white. So I'm just dry brushing this over. And when I was doing this mask, I thought about adding some color but I was pretty happy with how this turned out and I showed it to my wife and she she thought I should leave it alone and just leave it this you know more of a neutral black gray and white mask and so I'm, I'm really happy with how this is turning out and you can see how those details of those lines really just pop by dry brushing that white over it and I was really I want to say messy but very casual on doing this. I wasn't worried about keeping all those lines completely black, but I wanted them to stand out and you can see the separations in, you know, in those pieces from having the different pieces of Warbler. So now I'm going to go ahead and let that dry overnight. And the last thing I want to do is I've got some watered down black acrylic paint and I want to fill the right eye there, the one you can't see out of, and have it dripping down. I was watching Asa Clay's video where he makes uh, Eyeless Jack, and Eyeless Jack's eyes kind of have this drippy black effect. So I thought it would be fun to do the same thing on this mask and make it look creepy. Now with that step done, we'll let this dry overnight one more time, and I'll be ready to add the elastic cord. So I think these are just like, I don't know if they're shoelaces or something like that, but it's just kind of a rubbery black cord. So I just thread it through, tie it off, and I'm done. So here is the finished creepy cosplay mask out of Warbla. I'm really happy with how this turned out. It wasn't a super long project. It's not overly detailed, but it was a fun thing to do. It would make a good Halloween mask or cosplay mask. If you're doing any kind of costume party and you want to have a creepy look and I wanted to do something where you could just add like a simple hoodie and have a complete costume. So here's the mask with just a regular black hoodie and I think it really completes the look. I had this section open there and I thought it'd be fun maybe to add some makeup to make like a burned effect or something to make the character even look creepier. 
So there is the finished mask. All right, well, thanks for checking out today's video. If you want to see me do more cosplay masks, please leave it in the comments down below. If there's a certain character you want me to make a mask of, leave that in the comments down below. And also, if you haven't already done so, please subscribe to my channel. It really helps the channel grow. All right, thanks for watching, and remember, never stop creating. Bye.